This is Ty. Sit. This is Ty's roadmap to success. Now there's two other dogs. You're going to be able to hear them uh, when I'm going through this. We really primarily work with him. His brother, I worked with him and his brother a little bit. I think his brother is actually probably the catalyst that causes him to bite. And then we have another dog named Pod, who is the one that's doing that right now, who needs to learn how to stay and practice being alone because he's freaking out. He doesn't know how to do that. So uh, this is their roadmap to success. I'm gonna start off by talking about Pod. So go to my website, doggoneproblems.com. Uh, if you're looking at a desktop, there's a, uh, there's a red bar at the top and the right side, well, actually, uh, on the top, it'll say dog training tips. Click that one. When that page loads on the right side, I think on the right or right or left, I think it's on the right, there's a search box. Type in stay. And you'll find a whole bunch of write-ups where I've taught dogs to stay. You want to teach your dog to stay for three days. First for duration, up to five minutes, then for distance, then amongst distractions. So follow the instructions there for, with pod. Crash, a little passive training. Uh, try that with Todd, uh, Pod, so the Pod can practice stay while you go get a drink of water and then release him. Stay while I go use the bathroom and then release him. This is a lack of being able to do this, but the, the animation that your dogs have, they're so aroused, I'm pretty sure that's, the reason he's probably bitten is he's been overexcited on messing with every single time because I don't see an aggressive dog here at all. I see a puppy that's a little bit confused. And so I have no problems with him. Um, all right, so um, one of the first things I saw when I came to the door, the guardians had kind of lined the dogs up and they were petting them and trying to calm them down and allow the guests to kind of come in without being accosted. Problem is anything your dog's doing when you pet it is what you're specifically amplifying or reinforcing. Branson, that's one of the things we taught him today. Um, and so if you're petting a dog that's nervous or anxious or, or ferocious, you're gonna make him more ferocious or whatever the case may be. Um, and so uh, what I'd like the guardians to do, we're start off by talking about guests coming over because that's a big priority and kind of, uh, problem for them. Now, uh, before we get to that, the video above, we talk about exercise and that's gonna be a big factor for these. These guys are very, very athletic and they're getting nowhere near the exercise that they need. And so uh, we have some creative ways to exercise. Sit, that's an exercise, but that's good behavior, we like that. Um, so do the stairs or whatever it is, but if you have a guest that's coming over, make sure they text ahead of time. Now we have a very busy household, there's a lot of people coming and going. Again, I would put a giant sign on the window, on the inside of the window, do not knock. If you ring our knock, doorbell and knock, we will not answer because we have dogs that are go crazy and they're in training. Please call or text us. If you're delivering your package, leave it below. And so if somebody rings the doorbell, I mean, that's actually something I do a lot of times is I'm just like, Normally that's what happens, the dogs run to the door or ring the doorbell. So you might have somebody out there ring the doorbell and then the rest of you just watch TV and act like nobody rang the doorbell. I just freak out and run at the door. Are you guys gonna come in? There's somebody in the door, what the hell are you doing? But then nobody comes in. And that's what, that's the, the reason this is classical conditioning, the doorbell rings and then somebody comes to the door. Well, if the doorbell rings and then nobody comes to the door, we desensitize them for that. So we can help let them less animate. Never once while we so again, he's all, he gets all worked up. Nobody's moving, nobody's acting like it. After a while, you're knocking on the wall or wherever it is, and the dog just, whatever. Sit. 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 This is a little bit harder because he's a little bit worked up. He hears they're worked up, and there might be somebody at the door. They're dealing with three things. Yes, I know, I'm telling them. Um, so, uh, all right, so uh, when we have a guest come over, if we know a guest's gonna come over, we would exercise them ahead of time. I would have the only one dog out with that guest. Now, if it's him and we're worried about him, and again, I don't see him as an aggressive dog. He got something hanging out of the side of your mouth, uh, some fur or something. There we go. Um, so uh, when I deal with the dogs that are reactive to people inside, sometimes what I'll do is I'll have the guest uh, call us when they, they get here and have the guest outside. Now it's just snowed for the first time this year, probably, I hate it, um, here in Nebraska. But we, went, we have the guest text us outside. We go outside with the dog. And then basically the dog can play, the guy, guest can play catch with the dog a little bit. So uh, I'll talk about how to do that in a sec. But they play a little catch. And then after a while they're, hey, Ty, Ty, right Ty puppy, Ty, Ty, come. There we go. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Ty. So there we go. So basically once we teach him to catch, then the guest, the person with a leash could go out there, stand on the leash, sit, sit. And then the guest could throw treats to him at whatever distance we need where he's not reacting. And I'm gonna talk about that, remind me of that, that's on the list. Um, and we'll, so basically going out for a walk together, dogs process things by literally moving forward. So now we're, also we're outside, there's a lot of distractions, sights, sounds, and smells. 
and there's a lot more escape routes for dogs. And let him look because there's not up there, and then he'll stop looking. There were treats on the table behind the camera. Um, so basically, now we help the dog process because we're outside, number one. Uh, there's a lot of distractions, and I'm moving forward with this guest. But first, the guest tries to play fetch. And if the dog's barking or whatever, then just give up on that and start walking. You might have to have the guest walking the other side of the block. The idea is to kind of use a triangular shape so you're eventually walking closer and closer together. But uh, for him, I think if you exercise him first and then meet him outside and the guest starts playing this catch game, I think he's going to warm up to guests pretty quickly. It doesn't have to be a marathon walk, maybe just around the block or the end of the block and back. And then, you know, now that he gets to meet the guest in an outside environment, he's moving forward. And then when he gets outside, maybe play a little bit of that ca uh, the fetch, uh, catch game. Uh, to teach your dog to catch, what you would do is have somebody in the house, have, a, have somebody with a handful of treats like this, and then put the dog in a sit like a foot away. Sit. Most of us, when we throw it, go one, two, and then we throw it on the third one, and it hits them on the head. And then they get it off the ground. Well, then they don't have to catch. So what I do instead is I just throw it, go, and I throw it on the first one. I don't wind up multiple times. And I try to make it such a good throw. All he has to do is open his mouth, and it goes into his mouth. And it does go in his mouth, I'm going to say the word catch. If it hits his nose and goes down, the person who's sitting next to him on the floor is going to pick it up and give it back to the person. So the only way the dog gets it is by catching it out of the air. Now, first throw it really good, but after a while, now you're throwing it this way and that way, and the dog's like leaping up and grabbing it out of the air. But it creates good eye-mouth coordination, which is funny, but it's important for dogs to have. Uh, but also, when we have guests come in, we can have somebody over there standing on the leash, and the guest can come over and just play catch with him a little bit. And we wait for him to settle down. When he's nice and settled, then the guest leaves. Uh, and so the guest, the guest didn't pet me. The guest didn't give me eye contact. For dogs, a lot of times, eye contact, front-facing, or petting, if the dog is uncomfortable, is going to set the dog off. So when the person does it, we'd like to, if the, if the dog is there, I'd like to, if I'm playing catch, I'd like to go like this, so I'm still looking forward, and I catch, and then throw. But at, you're not going to do this until the dog already knows how to catch. But the catch is a great way for people to interact with your dog in a positive way at whatever distance. Now, the important thing is the dog is not reacting. And we're trying to play fetch. He's not going to be interested in the treats. And we're also rewarding the wrong thing. How about Branson instead? Branson. Order dog bed. Go to uh, uh, Groupon. Get a Sealy Posturepedic or a memory foam. Make sure it's light gray, light cream, or white. Um, and uh, that it looks like a couch cushion, not any uh, like a duvet cover. I keep on saying that word. Uh, and then uh, also no pattern on it because the, the dog's eyes are not very good for, for detail. So the first way we do it is we toss a treat. Branson, and, let it, and he licks it up and he say the word Branson. I usually, usually, usually do that with about 10 treats. Then what I do is I leave one there. Let's see if we can do one here. I leave one there on there. That's why I want a light color. So when he sees it, Branson. So you do this when he's in the next room or whatever, and then when he sees it and licks it up, we say the word Branson. So the other way I can lead him onto there and give him a sit or a down and give him the treat, and I would say Branson when I put the treat in his mouth. Now, the second way I do it is when he goes there on his own accord, without any influence and no treat there, then I drop, throw a treat or drop a treat so that he's like, what first do it's to entice me to go here. Now, if I go here, treats fall from the sky. This is a good place. I'm going to start hanging out here a lot. And I like putting it in front of the TV because this is where we sit and watch TV. And that way the dogs are out of our way and they're in our line of sight. And, you know, seeing all the dogs sleep together in a dog bed is one of the things that I enjoy. Um, okay, so um, uh, let me see. Um, sit. So I say it once and I give him three seconds. If he doesn't do it, then I don't, I don't say no. I, if I repeat it, I'm watering down my authority. If I get mad, then I'm channeling the wrong thing. I just, I have, a, I have four treats in my hand. These are not for me. I'm gonna put them in the dog's mouth, but the dog has to do something to earn them first. I think these dogs' problems are they didn't have any rules, they were under-exercised, and they were confused about their position and their rank and uh, authority in the house. I think they think that they were actually protecting me when they jumped over the fence and bit the neighbor for mowing his lawn. Um, and so we talked about uh, uh, the fencing. And again, if you want to take advantage of that extra roll of fencing, just let me know. We'll do that trade that we talked about. Uh, and that way you can, uh, I would do that this weekend. So it, the more you tether the dog, the more frustration you create. It's illegal to do that in most states because it creates frustration in the dog. Different sort of frustration than that. But yeah, we don't, and you hear what's going on when you're frustrated. They're just out of balance energy. That's what attacks them. This is the dog with a bite history. I haven't had any problems. I'm petting him, no, no interactions. Uh, his brother actually is more unbalanced than he was, but he's been in a kennel for a couple hours, so I'm giving him a little credence for that. Um, okay, so that's for guests. Set the dog up for success. As I talked in the video above, I'm not going to talk about exercise, but make sure you start that exercise journal and follow the set the instructions there. I also went over uh, for rules. One of the rules I suggest is not being allowed in the furniture. That's why we created a Branson situation. And so, Branson. 
So then, uh, and remember, if he gets in the furniture where he touches nose of the tree, throw it on the ground, and when he licks it up, we'd say the word off. I also like to give my dogs directional commands. So one of the rules I suggest is when, because we eat a lot in this room, eat, we eat. Uh, but when somebody is in this room with food, the rule would be the dog's not allowed to be on this carpet. It has to be in the wood. or on the, That's why the dog bed's outside of the zone. So basically what we would do is I want to teach the dog to leave this area. First, I have to put it in context. So the way I do that is I let him see I have a tree. I just roll it right outside. And I say out when he licks it up. And he's going to come back and I throw it with the second tree. So I do this with every area or portal in your room, like doorway. So, and he's looking, he's confused, he's looking at Branson, but that's smart, because that means he's already starting to figure out the Branson thing. So the kitchen, do the same thing, go in the kitchen and throw two treats out. I usually grab the tricky trainer treats and I'll leave here with you, you can get these on Amazon. Make sure you fold it over and burp all the air out of them, they have no preservatives, that's why they work so well. But if you don't, they'll be hard as a rock in about 10 minutes. So what I do is every room, I tear them in half and then throw it out of the room. He goes out and says, out, and then he comes back and I do the second one. And then I would do it for every doorway, all over the house. And then I repeat the whole circuit. Instead of being in the room, I go out there and throw the treat into the room so I can say out for any area and the dog knows what I mean. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the couch. I say off, so now I'm putting in context. I'm a dog behavior, so I'm force-free. I don't want to punish the dog or force the dog to do things. Uh, one of the guardians, we were trying to put his brother back in the kennel, and she was kind of forcing him. And she was doing it to be nice because she wanted to get more questions answered and all that. But every time we force the dog, we're activating their opposition reflex, and we're breaking their trust in us a little bit. And then I, don't, I can't trust you. I have to look out for you. I have to actually watch you because you might do something wrong. And that creates all the wrong energy. So, um, all right. So basically, um, uh, other rules. Uh, the humans need to eat something before they feed the dogs. When the dogs are fed, they should eat one at a time. And the other dogs are not allowed to be within seven feet. The dogs should not be allowed within seven feet of people who are eating or in the kitchen where are preparing food. Now, to do the kitchen, what I would do is I'd go in the kitchen, microwave a piece of bacon, put it on the counter. And that's going to cause the dog to want to come in. If it's hardwood floors, I haven't seen the kitchen, but put painter's tape down wherever the blind is. And then use that third escalating consequence, march at the dog. But first, again, we've taught the dog to leave the kitchen by throwing those treats the way I showed you. Um, but if the dog doesn't, then I march towards the dog. And I, when I get to the line, I stop and wait for the dog to be stationary. If the dog's ever walking forward and I back up a step, then I'm inviting the dog forward. So wait for the dog to be stationary, then take two steps backwards and pause. Just a quarter of a second. Two steps backwards, pause. Two steps backwards, pause. And as soon as the dog crosses that threshold, you hiss and rush towards it. Now, if I'm here and that's where the line is, and I rush towards the dog and I get to this point and he gets off the carpet, then I would stop here. I don't have to go all the way to the line. Um, if you forgot what the escalating consequences are, message me. I have a video for that we can share with you. Um, other rules, you have to sit at the door double the length of time. Sit, sit. If the dog can sit within three seconds, walk away, sit down somewhere, wait one minute. Then after one minute, go back and say sit again. If it doesn't sit this time within... 33 seconds, walk away for two minutes. Next time for four minutes. We're gonna have to get a photo bomb right there. There we go. Um, puppy, puppy, puppy. Everybody, this is the hand motion I use to get a dog to come and then get him to sit. I go to an arc over their head. I lower it, let him have the treat. And I tickle him under his chin. Um, let me see, come up with a list of the official, well, uh, official command words and say vocabulary. Somebody's saying come here and the word is come. So we're all using only one word. It makes it easier for the dog. Um, other rules. Um, uh, for the beds, has to get permission to come on the bed. Um, the guardians are good about not letting him uh, go up and down, uh, go out the door ahead of time, but don't let him race up and down the stairs ahead of you. If he does that, then teach the dog to wait, then say penthouse or lobby, depending on which direction you're going. So that way the dog isn't in front. Uh, make sure before walks the dogs are calm. Most of the time we confuse excited for happy when it comes to dogs, but excited is an unbalanced state of mind, and for him that's when he's going to get in trouble. So um, a lot of times we pick up the leash, the dog gets super excited for the walk. Well, that's the energy they're going to carry with them on the walk. Mm -hmm. I did this with a guy in LA. I'm going to give the very condensed version. First step is walking. First step is not narrating. Don't say, you want to go for a walk? You want to go for a walk, 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 walk. And the dog gets all crazy. So don't do that. Walk to where the leash is. As soon as the dog recognizes that it's going to do that, it'll race ahead of you. Well, whoever's in front is in charge. So as soon as the dog walks in front of you, turn around and sit down. Wait for the dog to calm down completely. Then get up, and I'm guessing the leashes are kept in that drawer right there. So as you're walking there, oh, we're going for a walk, we're going for a walk, and they get excited, and they run ahead of you. So as soon as they walk one inch in front of you, you turn, and you don't say a word, you're saying through your actions, I don't like what you're doing. And I disengage when you do that. And we sit down, wait for the dog to completely calm down, and then we repeat. It, I had one guy that took 45 minutes of walking back and forth before the dog stayed behind him the whole time. Mm -hmm. Do this at times when you're not planning on taking it for a walk. It's the easiest way to do it. You're going to go to the bathroom, go over there, 
go back, you know, just do it a couple times for other, different times. Yes, I know you want some more treats. Um, and when you get there, get to where it is, tell him to sit. But now he should be calm following you. And he sits, as soon as he reach, sits, reach for the handle to the drawer. You won't even make it before he gets up and wiggles. And do this with one dog at a time only. Teach them it separately. Um, and as soon as he starts wiggling or gets excited, pull your arm back. Now tell him to sit. If he sits within three seconds, we continue. If he doesn't sit within three seconds, I walk all the way to the back of the couch. We start the whole process again. The guy that took 45 minutes to walk back and forth, it took an hour of reaching before his dog stayed in a sit while he reached and attached the leash. But when we went on the walk, he was like, that was the best walk I have ever been on. It took an hour and 45 minutes. Second time, it took 20 minutes. Time after that, it was seven minutes, then two minutes. So you reach a tipping point, but they're, they're puppies, so it's not, you haven't reached that bad example yet. So if you just work on it, now the dog's like, oh, remember when we used to pull up the leash and then we'll walk? Now it's like a drill. Like only one out of five times we go for a walk, exactly. And we want the dog to be calm and balanced, and that's gonna help put them in a position to succeed on a walk. Now, if he continues being lungy and, and growly and all that stuff about a month after the session, let us know we can set up a bat or behavior adjustment training session, and we work specifically on, on reprogramming that behavior. But I'm pretty sure that once we incorporate rules and structure, they're not, I'm more worried about his brother than I am him. His brother is just all kinds of out of sorts. Um, he's, and he seems pretty smart. He's probably, his brother's probably pretty smart as well. So teach them tricks. I taught the guardians how to do the hurricane. Maybe there's a bunch of people in this house, and a great way to boost the dog's self-esteem and confidence is teach them new tricks. So maybe what I'd like to do is each Sunday, one new person in the house is going to teach both, all three dogs a new trick or command. Go to YouTube, go to my website. I've got a bunch of training videos on how to trick, do these things. Um, and then teach the dog a hurricane. And then all week long, everybody practices hurricane. We teach each dog separately, and all week long, we're practicing hurricane before everything. And by the end of the week, they've got hurricane down. Next week, we teach them how to bang their dead or roll over. So each person, new person takes over each week, teaches the dogs. So now the person is more of a mentor, so the dog respects that person a little bit more. We have different ways to redirect the dog's attention and distract them. We're also boosting the dog's self-esteem. Most reactive dogs are actually insecure dogs. Um, and now we have, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So if we have like six people, seven people in the house, and each person teaches the dog three tricks, well, that's like close to 20 tricks or commands. That's that's way above average, and then that's great ways to redirect the dog's attention. Um, we also went over petting, petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose, come here, come. So I'm gonna ask him once or twice, he doesn't do it. I'm not gonna beg him, because that would just water down my authority. Now I can page him and have him come over here by offering something he wants. So he wants this trick, sit. Now I would either pet him, or in this case, I'm gonna give him a treat, and say the word sit and only the word sit. Not good sit, not go sit, just sit. Um, and so for petting with a purpose, let's say he came up and he was nudging me with his nose. Well, if I pet him, then I'm telling him he's in charge of me. So what I do instead is I ask him to down. And then I pet him or give him the treat afterwards as a reward for getting down. So petting with a purpose just tells the dog, you can't tell the humans what to do anymore. You have to pay for the privilege of their attention. And after a while, the dog will come and sit in front of you to prepay for attention. When it does do that, make sure you do recognize or reward it. Otherwise, it'll go back to pawing at you or all the other things. Uh, use paycheck if you suspect someone is petting without a purpose. And then passive training is just waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behavior that you want without any influence. So if he would have just walked up to me, I would have petted him and said, come. If he sits down next to me, I pet him and say, sit. But again, these are things I'm not enticing him. I'm not paging him, like I said here. We're just waiting for the dog to voluntarily offer you those. So what we're telling the dog is these are things that we really like. Every time we do this, this is what we reward. Now we're also gonna get rid of the negatives. We have a couple water bottles. A lot of people use this to squirt the dog. That's a punitive, that's a punitive measure. Dogs don't learn that way. Dogs learn about 80% faster with positive reinforcement. So just rewarding the dog with desired action and behaviors is a hell of a lot more effective than this. Um, they agree. Um, let me see. Um, uh, uh, I showed the guardians how to let the dogs out of the kennel calmly. And I have a kennel training exercise for this as well. So we, we open the door, we block it with our feet. We wait for the dog to sit. As soon as it sits, we take a step backwards and bite it out. After a while, we wait for it to sit. And then when it sits, we take one step backwards. It tries to get, come out. We take a step back forward. And the dog's going to stay there until we say the release command. Or we wait until it lies down. There's different versions of this you can do. But the energy they escape the kennel is what they're going to have. So don't let them, and we have three dogs and they're all crazy. Well, then problem's going to happen. So teach them the only way you can leave the kennel is by being calm and balanced, and then I will let you out. But the door's open, and I'm not even standing in front of it after we practice this a while. 
Uh, let me see. Um, uh, the, the stuff I had on the list, I think I had already on there. What did I write? What did I tell you right now? I covered it. That was the purpose. Pass the train. No, the little thing I had, uh, the note I had you to write down to remind me. <laughs> Furniture, food. Boundaries, guests, something like that. Uh, Which I can note. Collapsing not... distance. Okay, so when you're when the guest is playing catch with the dog, this is what I want to get to. So uh, we're gonna first teach the dog to catch without the presence of anything that make it more difficult. And let's say the dog, uh, the guest approaches the dog, and at, at, when we get to ten feet, the dog starts barking. The dog's saying ten feet is the, and once you cross ten feet, I feel too intimidated or whatever, and I'm protesting. I disagree. Person should immediately walk away and increase the distance until he settles down. Sometimes you have to move out of sight. Wait for the dog to settle down. And then come back, and 10 feet was our distance, I might stop at 12 feet before the dog reacts is the key. And then the person's gonna get a handful of treats, we're gonna play fetch about five or six times, and then the person's gonna walk away. Mm -hmm, put more fetch. And then the person comes back into the room, and this time goes to 11 feet and plays a little catch. And then leaves the room for about five or six treats, and leaves the room, comes back. Now we're at 10 feet. Now the dog's not reacting because it likes the activity. And we're helping the person collapse the distance between them and the dog. But the key is, as soon as the dog starts getting stiff or grumbles or it won't take the treat or won't sit down, that's its indicator, I'm getting ready to explode. The whole point is it cannot react at all. If you react, you push too far too fast, and that's the most common mistake people make. You want everything all at once. It's gonna take a process. So for your neighbor that he jumped over the fence and bit, I would invite him to come over after you taught him to catch. Because he's next door. It's super duper easy for him to come by and spend a couple minutes and then leave the house. Oh, pressure's off. I got some treats from that guy. And then he came, and the last memory emgram I have of, the, of that person is he was throwing treats to me mm -hmm. at a distance where I felt comfortable. But if I'm throwing treats where he's reacting, and, I, and he's, then I, that's what he's remembering is I was all blustered. And yeah, and when I cursed that son of a bitch out, he gave me treats. That's the wrong energy. You want calm energy, which is what's rewarding. And eventually you get that person in closer and closer. But don't make a mistake when just because we're really close that you start petting him and doing it. He needs practice. And so I would ask the neighbor if we can, do you mind walking together? So after we get to the point where you can pretty much have him lift the treats out of your mouth, out of your mouth or whatever, or not out of your mouth, out of your hand. Uh, that'd be a little bit weird. Uh, we're not birds. Um, so uh, remember, front facing is confrontational. So if your dogs are reacting to somebody, try to get that person on this dog's side or turn the dog to the side. The dog probably won't want to turn to the side. If you're walking down the sidewalk and you're walking towards somebody and the dog starts kind of lagging behind, your dog's saying, I'm uncomfortable. Walk onto the person's lawn or walk into the street, allow whatever's going by to pass. Your dog needs to recognize the humans are looking out for me. I don't have to look out for them anymore. We're flipping the leader follower dynamic. So if your dog tells you, I'm uncomfortable, I'm scared of that dog we're approaching, and you just force it to do it anyways, why well, don't, you're not listening, I have to take matters in my own hands. And dogs have a fight or flight response, you take away the flight with the leash, so I'm gonna fight. So instead, the dog starts lagging behind, you just walk down somebody's sidewalk, walk around a car, let that person pass. It's like, whew, my humans are paying attention to me. I don't have to watch out for myself. We want the dog to move, want to move away voluntarily rather than confronting it. Um, let me see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I went over. I'm sure I went over some other stuff. Uh, but this is close to the end. So um, again, practice with the dog. <laughs> Um, let, uh, let me go ahead and wrap this up. Give me one sec. Um, so practice the dog's technique. If they fail on a behavior, they don't act the way you want, recreate that behavior later on after you fully exercise them, and uh, you can make it the easiest version possible, and then practice the first step over and over and over until the dog does what you want on the first step. Only then go to the next step and practice all the individual steps, one dog at a time, and only one step until you've done all the steps, then do it in the easiest capacity with all the steps. All right, well, uh, come here, buddy. I need you to sign off. This is Ty, sit. And this is Ty's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.